Well, joining me now to discuss uh, the passing of uh, the late Latif Jakonde is uh, Ayodele Adewale, a beneficiary of the Latif Jakonde free education policy. He joins me in the studio. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. And now joining me via Skype is Wale Okuni, National Secretary, Projects Nigeria Movement. He will be joining us later as we proceed in the conversation. Condolences have been pouring in uh, for the passing of the former Lagos State Governor. And so many leaders across the country have been speaking, extolling his personality. And one that uh, really strikes for me is uh, that's coming from uh, Ashwaju Bola Tinubu that said he was, that's Latif Jakandi, was the last of uh, the titans. Uh, uh, let me get from you how you would describe the person of Latif Jakandi, seeing that you were a beneficiary. Uh, how would you describe his person and what he stood for, even as a politician? Well, I would say that um, he was a visionary leader. He was a true follower of his leaders. And of course, he was very loyal. Not loyal just to the the being of the leader, but of course the, uh, their postulation, their philosophies, their ideas and ideals, and he was able to translate it to reality. Mm. What if Jaconde have not done or carried out the action group program? You understand, I mean, action group was more deepened yes. in Lagos, considering the fact that it was from the Southwest. And they had their following based on their programs that earned them their, their name, and of course, their strength. So for Ashwagi to have said he's the last of the titan, it's very deep. Mm -hmm. He's not looking at it from the nomenclature of, of the size or the thinking of people towards the man, but again, the work and, on, and the ideals of what the founding fathers of this nation emphasized for us and the, where they wanted us to be. So, Jack only represent or represented all that. And uh, 39 years after, after leaving power as governor, his administration still remains, as it is said, a hallmark in Lagos, especially with uh, the developments uh, that we see across uh, the states. He held on to deliver uh, his promises while he was campaigning uh, as the candidate for the Unity Party of Nigeria. He promised to deliver on education, he promised to deliver health care and all of that, free education, which a lot of people benefited from. And that also bettered uh, the Lagos State University. A lot of people know today in Ojo and some other, you know, all of that. I want you to talk about he delivering on his promises because that is one thing that a lot of Nigerians keep talking about now. The politicians uh, that we see today finding it challenging to deliver on their promises. Well, you spoke about Allmark, but you should also understand that Jack Conde recalibrated the benchmark mm. for development. Our laws set or put in place the benchmark, mm. but he recalibrated, I mean, recalibrated it. it. And starting from education, you see, I was fortunate to have sat with Chief Anthony Nahoro, CFR, at a discussion then at Isaac John. Babaoni Wideo Mojola was also on that table with Professor Jadisola Akonde and uh, Professor um, Dr. Kesaya Awoshika. And we were talking about the Pro National Conference Organization, how we wanted a new constitution for Nigeria, and we got to the issue of education. And I asked them, how did they achieve it? And they said when they first told our law that um, it is possible to achieve free education, they were startled and asked why. Because as at that time, they had over 5,000 teachers in the West. And Baba Maja and the rest sat down, you know, he was a mathematician and some other people, sat down to look at this and how they were going to fund it and the structure to to educational system in the morning and in the evening, but the issue of structure, mm. infrastructure came to be. And that is where Jack Conde actually made a very remarkable feat or recorded it. I was also privileged to see yesterday the man that, the architect that designed that building that they called the poetry school. It was from that poetry school that Jack Conde recal recalibrated the two period system into one 
And there was when we also came in as a test project then for the UP Universal Primary School uh, yeah. Basic Education, education Project yeah. and all that. And with that structure, they were able, you understand, to do a lot. After solving the problem of finances and, and all of that, then come to putting up policies and setting agencies and all of that. You can't take it away from Jack on there. Within four years, mm. it was able to set up various agencies like LOMA, the printing press, and, and the university, and, and so many other things. Jack Conde was a populist man. And if you also look at his politics, he believed that you carry everybody along, oh. you created opportunity for them, and that opportunity also drove his politics and politicking. The first election he had, from the records, I think he had barely over 500,000 votes. Mm. By the second year election, he had over 1.5 million votes. Wow. So that means that his infrastructural pro programs and all of that was able to empower people. People also got funds to put in as capitation fee to the party, contributed. And because they were deriving something, survival from it, they wanted it to continue. And in doing all of these things, it brought him up above his peers. He was not gluttonic, he was not carried mm. away with material things. Right. And he envisioned a lot of things even before putting it to bear. Contemporary politicians should also learn from that. I was going to ask that. They should learn from that. It's not about the next election. It's about you helping to solve a problem. Every party has a manifesto. Every party has a, has a program. I was also privileged as the chairman of a local government when I came in because I had learned and worked with the founding fathers of, of the Nigerian state. So I was able to see the vision. And when we came into office, again, we started with the environment, education, and health. These are three basic areas where you touch everybody. But we don't see that. Uh as much anymore happening, you know, understanding the vision of founding fathers and carrying it on, which is uh, some of the challenges we see among uh, contemporary politicians, as you call them. And uh, the question is, uh, why is it so difficult to because carry on Because the followers that are keeping quiet. Really? And the followers are not partaking in it truly. <laughs> APC is going through party registration now. They're doing a lot to bring a lot of followers in. At times I tell people, it's not the container that matter, but it's the content in the container that defines the existence and truism of that container. Your station got burnt. Right. When it, in a studio that is almost very not too much conducive, but you are the content. Your workers, the, 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 the cameraman, the off-scene workers are the content of the station. So you still deliver and you give it a brand. So the right-thinking people must come into every political party, strengthen it with their ideas and ideals, and of course implement the manifesto. You don't just leave it to one man. You must understand, like my late father you know, told me, are your, your visions are beautiful and all of that. Do whatever you can lawfully to stay in power. If you lose power, your people will suffer. So most contemporary politicians also who want to stay in power and depend on numbers. But those numbers must be quality numbers that can help them stay in power to deliver the deliverable. So the people matter. The people defines their leadership. The leadership comes from the people. But again, a good leader will also drive good thinking and cue the people into a spectrum. Now, he, he said, like you mentioned, to have been an incorrupt, of incorruptible nature. Yeah. And uh, he shunned any other thing that, material you know, gains. material gains. And he lived in his private residence, like uh, uh, the late chief Awolowo also did. And again, one wonders what changed after, you know, this titans, which he is the last of them, what changed? Because what we see now is the country as it is, we are still tackling issues of uh, corruption and that leadership that is incorruptible, a lot of Nigerians, they, they, they are not seeing that. A lot of our leaders are not showing, you know, that character, which uh, the late chief uh, Jack Let me tell you what changed. Let me tell you what changed. 
after the Civil War, there was a gap, right? Now, the gap created an opportunity for adventurers, military adventurers, to take power. These are people who never understood the, the, the intricacies of building society. Mm. You understand? They weren't prepared for it. Now, the founding fathers were pushed aside. They struggled to set another political calendar to come in. They came in. Again, the will of the people was subverted. You understand? If Chief Obafemi Awolo had been allowed to become the president as the people's will, then we get it correctly. The adventurers came again in 1983. There was a long gap. Now, during so that those long, gaps? Those gaps created a lot of things. You can't leave something on nothing. Mm. Now, those gaps also was very long. And within that longevity of time, the founding fathers were cut off, saying that all politicians can't come in. Now, you have left, you have left a lacuna where people should have tapped deep into those ideologies. Right. And people that kept it, the political uh, intricacies and system, was again in the academia. Remember, the student union election kept on. If not for that, people wouldn't have even understood how political play all right. will come to be. So that means that all political parties or groupings or what have you must go back to the foundation of meeting, mm. at least quarterly. It's just like a church. Mm. If they don't meet regularly, then they cannot continue the culture of what they stand for or what they are about. So meetings are very, very, very key. important. During the Awolo era, they would always go to Ikene. When Agashi came on board, they would go to Awo. When uh, Adesoya, Papa Adesoya came on board, they would go to Jebubu. You understand? Right. To have their seasonal meetings, not only with their representatives as leaders of various states, but at, their followers would also that come point, there could also and be, get political education. At that point, there could also be accountability as Definitely. well. Definitely. The people will right. ask you questions. Right. Let's quickly have uh, National Secretary Project Nigeria Movement, Wale Okuni. He joins us now to talk about uh, the person of uh, Latif uh, Jakande. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Wale Okuni, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, uh, quickly talk to us. Uh, there's been so much uh, reactions uh, to the death of uh, Latif Jakande and uh, so much encomium coming from leaders across uh, the country. And one, like I told uh, my guest in the studio earlier, is one that strikes me the most is uh, that that came from uh, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu describing him as the last of the titans. How would you describe uh, the person of uh, Latif Jakande? Well, fantastic. As um, um, Latinubu rightly put it, the last of the Titan. Um, Balaji Barabe Musa, our revolutionary governor, just, just left us. Uh, we're in the same, uh, well, they brought us into what we call the AWO Political Academy, where discipline. Spartan discipline, um, intellectual tenacity is the rule, and you must be very ideological. He was, he was a leader truly to me. We, we, we worked together. He, he brought me closer. Uh, I'm going to issue a statement. I'm sending out a statement very soon about him. If what people don't know about him, uh, what I know. Uh, when uh, you know, because they also try to recruit um, very resourceful young persons. Um, to me, this is huge loss of a mentor, a benefactor, a hero, so to say, who achieved more than his peers. Uh, even up to today, what he has achieved, even in Lagos, dwarfed what mm -hmm. others that have come behind him has achieved. So, um, Papa Jack Conde is 
not just anybody is an epitome of our, our political academy. And he's done his best, and we're going to miss him greatly. All right, let's get back to the studio now. Uh, Comrade Ayo, how would you like for him to be immortalized? Well, you know, the normal ritual is that uh, they come, name one infrastructure, name one street, and all of that. Yeah, th that is good. That is good for coming generation to learn or ask questions, I mean, who are these people? The best way to immortalize them is that leaders, present leaders, must key into the program of the founding fathers of this nation. Papa Jack only keyed into it. The more you key into it, the more we build society, the more we build culture, the more we build structures. Mm. That is the only way. If you key into it, we can guarantee free education, even to university level. I paid 90 Naira per session for four years. Mm. I paid 360 Naira to go to the university. I was one day in Ashwa Jews house, and a man saw me and said, ah, did you school in London? I said, no, sir, I went to Lasso. The only best I'd, I'd ever had of something similar to private school was in St. Gregory's College. I went to private, I mean, I went to nursery, I mean, uh, primary, primary, public, primary, secondary, I mean, uh, public, public secondary, secondary, public university. Mm. <laughs> Understand? So I will feel that the people of Nigeria, not only Lagos State, it will be very wicked of us to limit it to Lagos. Because Lagos gave way, or paved way, for all nationalities in Nigeria to get free education. And they're in far-flung areas of the world, including many industrial giants today. Oh. Dangote, Koshkaris, Ifan Yuba, name all of them. They got their wealth from Lagos through the program of Alaji Latif Jakonde right. and their likes. Let's return to Wale Okuni. Now, what lessons would you want uh, contemporary politicians to learn from the person of Latif Jakundi? And perhaps, uh, how would you also want to see him immortalized? Well, for me, I think what we can do about the life and times of LKG is for us who are in the political class of Nigeria to begin to learn ideological politics and not money politics. That's the way to immortalize him. Ideological, value-driven, service-oriented politics to the people. But because what obtains now, nobody do any studious discipline, you know, analysis of the state of the nation of the country or the state. You just go there and grab grab the resources of the state, you know, to recoup their investment. That is not the way to go about political leader. He told me, because we were in some movements together, I, he was chairman, I was secretary. At even at 80, and he told me that uh, politics is life, and it is essentially service to humanity. And you, you, we, we need to take it very seriously. It's not what these people are doing about it. So, a large Latif Jackson in immortalizing it, we must go back to ideological, value-oriented, service-oriented service or driven politics. That was what he taught me. He brought me closer politically. And he said, don't be ruffled by what people say. You must put your eyes on the ball on the political field. And we did well. What, what brought Muhammad Bouhari today was essentially the brain product of Alaji Latif Jakondi. And All I will right. tell the story, either in my memoirs or my statement. So right. what we should be doing at this point is for us as leaders of conscience, to emulate what our instituted and which he advanced 
okay. in ideological discipline politics. All right, we'll have to leave the conversation here now. Wale Okuni, National Secretary, Project Nigeria Movement, thank you for your time. I must also thank you, Ayodili Adewali, a, be a beneficiary of uh, the Latif Jakondi Free Education Policy. Thank you for your time thank as you well. Thank you for having me. And thank you for doing the good work. <laughs> thank you very much.